Welcome back. We're on number 179, which says the ratio of two quantities is 3 to 4. So ratio of two quantities is 3 to 4. If each of the quantities is increased by 5, okay, plus 5, then what is the ratio of these new quantities? Well, it's going to be 3x plus 5 over 4x plus 5. That's going to be the new ratio. But that is not any of the answer choices. Um, they have a is 3 over 4. Well, it's not going to be that because x could be anything. So it could be much higher. It could be much lower. b says 8 over 9. That's also not going to work. Same reason. 18 over 19. It's not going to work. d says 23 over 24. That's not going to work because, again, x could be anything. If x were 2, it'd be a different ratio than if x were 3. You know, if x was 2, then that's going to be 6, 11, and uh, 11 over 13, right? If x were 2. The problem is we don't know what x is. See, if x were 3, then uh, that'd be 9, be 14 over 18. This is a completely different ratio. So it all depends on what x is. And none of these answers gives us x. E just says it cannot be determined from the information given. So yeah, E is going to be the right answer. 180 says if the average or arithmetic mean of x and y, so x plus y, the average of that equals 60, and the average of y and z is... 80, then what is z minus x? Okay, um, well we've already set up these two problems, let's cross multiply and we get x plus y equals 120 and y plus z equals 160. And then uh, both of these equations have a y in them, so let's solve for the y and set them equal to each other y equals 120 minus x on the left, and y equals 160 minus z. Let's set them equal to each other. And we get 120 minus x equals 160 minus z. What happens when we isolate 120 and uh, move the z over to the, to the... What happens when we move 120 to the right and z to the left? We get z minus x equals 160 minus 120, which is 40. And z minus x is what we were solving for, so we know z minus x equals 40. 40 is answer B. 181 says, if half of the air in a tank is removed with each stroke of a vacuum pump, what fraction of the original amount of air has been removed after four strokes? Four strokes. Uh, how much air has been removed? Okay, so let's you know what? I can visualize this. So I'm going to draw this tank. Let's pretend this is the tank. So stroke one, what happens? We remove half of the tank, right? So previously, um, you know, it was completely filled. We removed half of it. So that's after stroke one. We removed uh, half. Or I'll write it out here. What happens after stroke two? Stroke two, we uh, remove half of what's left, right? So half of a half is going to be a fourth. So after stroke two, we have removed a fourth of the original here. Now, stroke three, we remove half of that again. What's half of a fourth? It's going to be 1 8. And then finally, our last stroke, uh, we remove half of that. And that's going to be 1 16. So we removed all this. We just need to add up these four numbers and we'll have our answer. So that's a half plus a fourth plus 1 8 plus 1 16. Since this is the largest uh, denominator, let's turn all these into 16s and see what happens. We get 2, 4, and an 8. Add them together, and you get 15 over 16. And that is going to be answer A.
182 says if if the two digit integers m and n so there's m and there's n and they both have two it two uh two digit integers are positive so both are positive uh, and have the same digits but in reverse order okay so basically what they're saying is this num or this digit here in this two two digit number is the same as this digit here um, which of the following cannot be the sum of m and n so cannot be m plus n and they give us uh, a equals 181 b is 165 c is 121 D is 99 and E is 44. Cannot be M plus N. Well, one thing that we could do to solve this problem is let's make these variables. So X and Y, whatever this number is, 10X plus Y is going to be M, right? Because if there were, this was 5, for example, and this was 2, then 50 plus 2 is going to be 52. By that same logic, 10y plus x is going to equal n. Because if y was 6 and x was 3, like let's say the number was 63, then 60 plus 3 is going to be 63. So using that logic, we've figured out what m and n are in terms of x and y. Hmm. We're looking for what it what cannot be m plus n, right? So if m is 10x plus y and n is 10y plus x, let's add them together and see what it could be so we know what we're looking for, or at least what we're not looking for. So 10x plus y plus 10y plus x is 11x plus 11y, which is 11 times x plus y. I guess then whatever the answer is here, it must be divisible by 11. That's what this is telling us. So which one of these are divisible by 11? That's not going to be our answer. So E is uh, divisible by 11. B is, C is. 165, let's see. Well, this number plus this number gets you the middle number. And I talked about that rule in the earlier video. So 165 d is definitely divisible by 11. So the only one left is A. And we are looking for something that cannot be M and plus N. So A is going to be your correct answer. Boom. 183. It says car X and car Y. So there are two cars. Car X, car Y. Travel the same 80 mile route. Oh, this is going to be a rate question. So we got rate, we have distance, and we have time. And you know that rate times uh, time equals distance, and that uh, let's see, rate equals distance over time. Those are just, you know, when you see a question like this, just write them out on your piece of paper, or write them out on your, your board. You actually have a board on the, on the day of the test, um, and so that you can reference it. Anyway, um, let's, uh, let's write them out, actually. Rate, um, time and distance and make a little chart here so car x and car y now they say that they travel the same 80 mile route so we know the distance is going to be 80 miles both cars travel the same distance car x took two hours to do it so two hours for car x and car y oh they don't tell you so let's use a variable let's just say t car y use t um in terms of the speed, car Y traveled at an average speed that was 50% faster than the average speed of car X. So whatever car X's rate was, this was 50% faster, so 1.5 R. Okay, how many hours did it take car Y to travel the route? So we are looking for this. We are looking for T. What is T? Okay, how, where do we begin? Where do we begin? Well, we see that, we know that rate equals distance over time and they give us the distance and they gave us the time so we can solve for r and the rate is going to be 40 right and we know that car y the rate of that is 1.5 of 40 so that's going to be 60 and time 
is going to be distance over rate. So the distance is 80 and the rate is 60 and the time is going to be 80 over 60 which is uh, 8 over 6 which is 1 and uh, let's see yeah so it's going to be 1 and 1 third when you uh, simplify that and that is answer C One eighty four says so if the average arithmetic mean of four numbers, um, and they give us the four numbers. So k, and they have two k plus three, and three k minus five, and five k plus one. So if the average of these four numbers, let's add them together, over four, uh, is equal to sixty three. What is k? Cross multiply, and we get, well, well, you know what, let's add up all the k's too. So 2k plus k is 3k plus 3k is 6k plus 5k is 11k. So 11k plus 3 plus 1 is 4 minus 5 is minus 1. So 11k minus 1 equals 4 times 63. So 252. I move the one over and we get 11k equals 253. Now we just solve for k by dividing. It goes into it two times. 33, 3. 23 is going to be our answer. And that is D. 185. If p is an even integer and q is odd, so p is even and q is odd, which of the following must be odd? It tells A, B, C, D, and E. A is P over Q. B is PQ. C is 2P plus Q. D is 2 times P plus Q. I'll just rewrite that as 2P plus 2Q. And E is 3P over Q. Well, you should know your number properties, and you should know that, let's see, we're looking at addition, right? So in terms of addition, we know that an odd plus an odd is going to be an even. An even plus an even is going to be an even. An even plus an odd is going to be an odd. For example, if 1 plus 1 equals 2, which is even, but 2 plus 1 is going to be 3, which is odd. So you should remember this. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, let's test out the different answers and see what we get. Um, I'm going to test out B first because B is simple. It's just two, two numbers multiplied. What you should know is that um, you should also memorize multiplication. So when you have an odd number times an odd number, that's going to get you an odd number. An even times an even is going to get you an even. An even times an odd is going to get you an even. So P is even, Q is odd. That means this is a even times an odd, that's going to be even. So we know it's not B. Let's try C. C is 2P plus Q. So P is an even, 2 is an even, so even times even is going to be an even number, plus Q is an odd number, so even plus odd is going to be odd. Ah, they're saying what must be odd, and C is definitely odd. So we've already found our answer. C is going to be our answer. If you try any of these other choices, it's it's going to be the same. You know, it's not going to work. So, just you know, for starters, let's try D. Two P, two is an even. P is even, so that's going to be even. Plus, two is an even times an odd. Even times odd is going to be an even. And even plus even is going to be even. So yeah, these other ones aren't going to work. C is the right answer, and that is how you solve number one eighty five. All right, check me out in the next video.